Yeah. Um, okay. So, 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 I guess to I, I said this on stream uh, last week, and I'll and I'll preface it again. Uh, a lot of coming on the internet into uh, into the the in in a lot of a lot of the mid aughts game culture was really weird because there's a huge part of this where a lot of you guys would make references to G4 Tech TV and to X Play and to the people Never on it. Never personally watched it. We didn't have it in Quebec. Didn't watch it. Didn't see it. Didn't Canada know. had it. It's a Canadian. Oh, it's a Rogers-based channel, mm -hmm. but we didn't have it in Quebec. Therefore, every time anyone talked about memes or memories of X Play and Attack of the Show and yada yada, yeah, I don't remember shit. Didn't get it. Didn't watch it. No idea. No connection. People would make jokes about Adam Sessler and. Uh, and Morgan, this and Olivia, and that, and and I'd be like, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't. We literally yeah. didn't get that here. So, starting out to preface once again to everybody that knows and gets this on a like a memory like level that like this, we have no idea <laughs> except for hearing about the the video game based show from you guys over the years. Um, so that uh last story from uh last week about how jrpg is a term that uh japanese devs took uh umbrage with as a uh, form of disparagement yes it, it was a painful term many years ago and people were like really what when and we talked about the the phil fish story for example um and yeah that was that's kind of the one that comes to mind mainly was just you know him going off on uh, 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 on, uh, on a Japanese dev at a panel talking about how they're yeah. offensive to everyone. While the uh, the while the dev was saying, "Hey, your games seem to be inspired by the old Japanese games. Um, how do you think? What do you think of our current ones? You know, or whatever." Uh, and then there was that era of also like the the reviews that were just kind of like, yeah, being being weird. But um, hey, I want to give a fire. shout out to fire. Gene Park for. Fire. Digging up receipts and calling out like specific morons, like Arthur Gies, the head, the former head of Polygon, for dumping all over Fire! Vanquish because it was Japanese. That era, that exact era, right? This is what we're talking about, and this is why it makes sense that all these years later they still kind of feel that way. Um, but then well, other people were. Before we go on, I really want to point out the the Phil Fish. Fire! Japanese games always had two layers to me. One, it's rude as Fire. and two, Fez Fire. sucks, dude. <laughs> I Fire. hate Fez so much. I remember. And for this dude to be like, well, your game sucks. You made one of the Fire. games I've ever played in my life. I, I I remember the the you're you're right back to yelling about the fake alphabet again, like <laughs> every time, every yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, the so thing deep, I put a one to one linguistic cipher instead of making cool puzzles. Um, the idea of a rotating pixel thing is, is visually interesting, but then sure is. What a cool concept! Lots of fun. Uh, what else? Shame the game isn't about that. What else are we doing with it? The oh, uh, the concept, of course, that, that and that was all during. The thing is, too, is that like that was during indie game the movie, right? And that was that was a part of the the catalyst was because if that event that uh, the story came from was a panel for indie game the movie, and mm -hmm. that was a Q and A that a Japanese dev asked after watching it, you know. Um, and again, you're looking at old Japanese platformers, you're looking at a game like Fez and you're looking at the inspirations that are direct in that regard. So the line of questioning was not uh, out of nowhere. Anyways, um, that era aside, um, people were like really that were not around for that are looking and asking a lot of questions about this whole JRPG story. And so the other thing that happened was people were like, oh yeah, I remember when X-Play had these wild segments that just went and, and, insane and I unhinged. Said no. Yeah, no, because I don't remember. we did not watch the TV show of the channel we didn't have, and then some clips popped up, and whoo, 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 whoo. Uh, wolf bark arf. <laughs> it's like, how can anyone, how can anyone disagree 
that there was a weird open air xenophobic racist air about Japanese games when you're watching them when you're watching them literally out loud with their mouth I I fear for the time that this race will rule over us um <laughs> I believe they had samurais, they invented judo, and then we nuked them. Was and That's uh, when they became a real country. There you go. Um, so, when the I saw that, my mouth fell open, because when me and Paige went to Japan, we went to the Hiroshima Holocaust Museum, in which I saw a goddamn child's shadow scorched into a wall. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... I don't think that for your fun video game thing, making fun of a nuclear holocaust in order to, what, dump on untold it, it, legends is appropriate. Again, as just as someone who, like, I don't know. I, I'm watching this, like, in whatever context it was in, there's, there's things where you're like, okay, I've listened to many a comedian tell many fucked up jokes and shit that's like, whoa, pull the collar. And we have also said ourselves absolutely a bunch of fucked up jokes and things. Make no mistake, certainly. But there, but it definitely does feel though that there's there's like there's something to just dropping all attempt at at anything. Um, like there's just dropping right down to World War Two slap a jap by war bonds level of caricature yeah. popping up into the screen with big buck teeth just going the, the fucking... full on like there's no there's nothing to this there's no the like dance fucking, um, there's no eggshell review it just is just a bunch of talking heads screaming sake in a weirdly racist accent it, for like 90 seconds <laughs> that's not a review and you, that like that's yeah and and, and and then of course like the the, the bit of like wacky wacky japan uh, uh tv and stuff which of course has been wacky forever but like leaning super hard in with just that combined with the shit that she was saying and then the cut-ins and then like uh uh getting uh actual japanese like uh, uh uh speakers to come in and do the narration on some of those bits and shit and you're just like why is this coming across so vitriolic like it's so it, it doesn't come across as like haha that funny little thing we're doing a bit here. No, it it, it comes off. <laughs> it's like it, weirdly so, venomous. So it, it comes off weirdly even. venomous, and um, so like I've been I've been doing some some digging and and going around and and reading everything people see it sends me. So like there's the the 2009 article with Greg Sachuk, right, where he describes that Japanese games, particularly role playing games, do not have any in innovation in them and basically talks down about their contemporaries around the time of Mass Effect 2's release. Um, and then you go back and you describe that uh, uh, Direct X was Project Manhattan and that uh, the Xbox was originally known as Project Midway, i.e., the battle in which. Uh, the Americans took over the the pace of the war in the Pacific from the Japanese, and it's just this constant, like, angst that this hobby is being dominated by a foreign culture. Video games from ninety eighty fucking seven, like after Atari, like shit the shit the bed. Oh yeah, eighty eighty seven to. 2005 when the xbox 360 started to do really well and japanese teams had trouble with hd development that whole period was like totally dominated by japanese games and as soon as the xbox 360 started to do really really well and north american and european games were starting to like really get their footing and, and have a lot of big success all of a sudden it's like this weird video game version of like white replacement theory 
Like in the X play I, I, clips, they're literally saying, "I am afraid of when they rule over." When they us. will take over. So I think, like for a quick, quick little history lesson on that, the third and fourth generation of video games took place after the initial Atari and, and Commodore era collapse because they had no compliance whatsoever. Games were shit. Some of them didn't work. They charged a fuck ton, and they were like, "You got Custer's fucking revenge." As an example of the quality you'd get uh, in some of your, with some of your fucking expensive ass purchases, is like the so most insanely vile early video game, it's crazy. So then, when Nintendo came out, they basically had the seal of quality, which is the little sticker that goes in the corner, and that was the introduction of that thing I always talk about: compliance, which is a list of things that your game has to have in order for in order for it to come out, including fucking working. So that brought a quality to the industry that didn't exist prior. That made it a hot commodity item that blew up, and then Japanese consoles took over because they became a an actual representation of, like, your game will work when you buy it, actually, and it might even be fun. So it the money... Yeah, yeah, it might might even be fun. Um, and uh, so I feel <laughs> like that, and, you know, we went through fourth generation. Something gener Atari could never promise you. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as we, we got into, like, exactly, like, the, the more Xbox era and things like that, I think the bit as well, with based on just, like, seeing the, 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 the X-Play clips and stuff, it feels like, like, sure, there's that angle, but I think it's also, like, this was the era of Ingrish and, like, the weird um, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger commercials coming to, to light and the lost in translation stuff getting found out about and like Japanese TV clips making their way onto QuickTime on the internet yeah. and it was it was premium like if you were if you were paying attention to anime and video games you were starting to find out about these these really weird random things that would pop up on TV and stuff mm -hmm. and clips and so that was part of it of just like leaning into the bizarre nature of that crazy shit and mm -hmm. like trying to recreate it with their own sense of humor and i guess you just yeah you go back to it now and you look at the bit and you know i mean yo there's snl clips of fucking jimmy fallon and blackface i mean there's there's uh, you, there's, there's there's that mad tv oh yeah character there was like, like an asian lady that Mick, was just like the the white guy Miss, doing Miss Kwan. An asian yeah no no, no well, uh, but but not, that, it wasn't the white guy but but like make uh, I, I don't remember that character i barely but i remember that mad tv had a, a thing yeah. make, make no mistake right you go back in time on anything comedic and you're getting you're hitting that like oh yeah okay this is this is not what this doesn't you can't fucking pull that out into uh, in current years so to speak but um and, and, and I, we're we're no different i mean i would like to disavow everything i've ever said mm -hmm. before 10 minutes ago sure um especially sure. stuff that none of you heard that i said to children on xbox live when they talk shit in halo and i made them cry because i convinced them that i was gonna fuck their mom oh yeah that little shit called me the N-word because I took the fucking warthog. Okay, time for the 30-minute shit talk at a 12-year-old. Fuck that kid. Um, Should have quit right away. Some of you participated in the world record any percent N-word speedrun. Don't pretend you didn't. <laughs> I you heard you. You know what? You know what? You know what the wildest one is. You know what the. You know what's a really good example of this. Uh huh. Because it's not a good example of this. Watching people who are like 15 right now discover fucking Tropic Thunder and going, "What the fuck oh, is Iron yeah. Man doing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was released the same year as Iron Man One, mind you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like Tropic Thunder is the funniest blackface joke ever. It's, it is incredible. It's wild because, like, this thing, people discovering it is kind of hilarious because they it, it immediately follows discovering it, going, what the fuck am I looking at? Why is that? What is Iron Man doing? Followed by the discovery that black people love Tropic Thunder. <laughs> and that you're looking at the, the ridiculousness of... A stupid fucking white actor going as far as he thinks he should go to play this character being the subject of the of the of the joke, you know? The point is how fucking insane Hollywood is, right? Like, you kind of find out about that shit, like all in one, and you just go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Um But anyways, all this to say, 
uh, that I remember the shows that we did get in in you know Quebec uh, included reviews on the run, and I remember what. <laughs> With our, everyone's favorite Tommy Tommy Tallarico, Tallarico. And I, who would review games he fucking worked on and gave them good scores. And I remember the the uh, fucking bullshit that is the shitting on CVS two because look at these dumb old pixel sprites. We need to get out of this era. Capcom's fucking in the past, and the fact that they haven't gotten with the times with three D is just embarrassing. Yada yada. Um, and that is a that is a stupid ass. A shitty review of 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 a good game, but at no point did he pull out the rice hat and fake t- teeth and start going for the chopstick bit it, while yeah. talking about CVS two. And hey, you know what? Hey, you know what? Let's let's all be fair. Two thousand five was almost twenty years ago. Now mm-hmm, we were mm-hmm. much younger. It was Most a very long time ago. Stupor. The the pat of two thousand five was a substantially larger and la- louder asshole than the Pat of 2023. And I would tell that Pat to go fuck himself. And if, like, for example, there was a video of me calling a bunch of people names at a fighting game tournament in which I sound like a fucking asshole, I look back on that with embarrassment and go, man, I was a dickhead. But if you were, say, I don't know, on broadcast television and you made a horribly racist anti-Japanese Bot and Kaios review and somebody went, wow, that was fucked up, maybe your response isn't supposed to be, oh, sorry, you're mad that I didn't give your boner simulator a good review, you alt-right fucking anime pedophile idiots. So the the tweet I then saw was the, the double down where Adam was like, nah, you know, on that. And it's like, yeah, okay, I guess, man. But it's like, I think, I think the uh, the the ultimate double down is, hey, man, that was pretty racist. And the response of, I'm not racist, you're a pedophile, might not work for you. It's not. It's not. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's just it's this is this is one of those things where you're just like, again, I laugh at fucked up jokes and humor all the time, and make fucked up jokes and humor all oh, the time. Let's be real. I saw this X play shit. I la- I got I got it's crazy, and I laughed. Uh, oh, I like, oh, I just I just I just woofed and hoofed. I just I just thought, but but I either. Love- but but either ultimately it's just like yeah there's there's just sometimes there's that little sting to it where you're like there's no there's not it's straight it's straight to World War Two with the bit that's just kind of wild <laughs> you know like you can you can go into the wild shit about J- how Japan does stuff you can there's a lot anyway whatever two thousand and 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 six or yeah. we're talking to twenty years ago so that's crazy it's crazy but any but all this to say it was a it was a pretty wild walk down memory lane for a lot of people but this is to bring up again why JRPG might have some bad yeah, feelings it, associated with it to it's it's really um, Yoshi it, P it, it, the the Greg Sachuk um, Bioware quote made me laugh really hard like one it like. That, I think, is actually my favorite part of all of this, because it's not overt. But it's like, okay, they're making Mass Effect 2 and Dragon Age and Dragon Age 2, right? And the head of Bioware says that JRPGs are are suffering from a lack of innovation, and they're, they're just not doing it. Bioware made the same game, like, eight times in a row between the year 2000 and 2020. The characters that people love in Mass Effect are all JRPG stereotypes. Garrus and Tally, the two most popular characters Bioware ever made, are fucking anime characters. It's, it's fucking silly. Yeah. It's fucking silly. I, I remember that quote popping up as well. It's like ridiculously dismissive for what your what your your company's about. Um, also, Bioware made Sonic in the Dark Brotherhood. Shut up. So let me let me let me close this segment on uh, on on another another statement. I remember. Um, 
back in the day, you know, the great Patrice O'Neill once said uh, that um, good jokes and bad jokes and things that offend and things that don't, the, a lot of the time they come from the same place, which is an attempt to make someone laugh. And, yeah. uh, like, they're, like, they're going to land and they're not, but, like, that's where they're trying to come from. That's the, the same, you know, effort getting put out there. Um, and I, you get that, and we all understand that. But yet somehow at the same time, while P Patrice said that, over here is Kramer. <laughs> yeah. And Kramer's on stage. And Kramer's having a really bad set, guys. He's not he was not his, having a his set. set is not going good. It's, it's not, not going, going well according well. to plan. <laughs> and there's a different energy about where that set went that yeah. isn't quite what Patrice was talking about. Yeah, all this stuff has this weird layer of like <laughs> um vindictiveness and annoyance and just ah oh, right. Um I think I, I talked about this the other night on stream, but I think the funniest thing about it is that um the the Japanese games are bad. When are we going to move on past these Japanese games? We saw the Elden Ring tweets about that game's interface. You remember that people like getting angry that that game has an equipment screen oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's yeah, bad yeah. design compared mm -hmm, to like Horizon mm -hmm, and all this mm -hmm, shit. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't remember who I saw like make this point. I, I brought up who I thought made it, but then they don't remember saying it. But regardless, it's a good point. Somebody on my timeline made it. Well, let's say you wanted to play a hit RPG from 1998 right if you were to play a japanese role-playing game from 1998 how much prep do you need to do how much prep do you need to do yeah say i give you a playstation one and a disc to play a hit rpg from 1998 yeah. How much work do you need to do before setting it up? How much research? How much backstory? How much systems? I would, I would just pop it in and press. You would new pop game it in and play and it. So like what, FF seven, FF eight. Yeah, FF9, I'd, let, I'd let the just, tutorials carry me and let the story. Yeah, you maybe explain you read itself. the manual. I right. let it explain itself. Well, like, what if you wanted to play Baldur's Gate one right now? <laughs> I would, that would. Uh, I would. I would schedule a phone call with you, and I would ask you for. <laughs> A couple hours of your time and i'd we'd pull up a chart and, like uh, like when you when you go back to games from the late 90s and the early aughts and they're they're from like north america a lot of those games are like wildly fucked up now like i just went through witcher one witcher one is so wildly fucked up and early bioware like the first bioware game that was like playable by a human being is like kotor one right like yeah um you, you play a japanese role-playing game you fucking load it in i'm go okay cool i know how the buttons work it plays like a regular fucking video game lack of evolution shut up greg go review your beers so two different groups of people interpreted D D paper uh tabletop gaming into uh, in different ways and yeah, the more literal that gets in a lot of cases, you're gonna you're in, in in WRPG cases, you're gonna have no idea what the fuck is going on with a bunch of those numbers. Um, I, anyways, it's not to say that like. <laughs> have you seen a screenshot of what System Shock One's like UI looks like? No. <laughs> in the back, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, that, and and again, these things all have their place. Like for you know anyone who loves diving in the numbers, I get the I get the, the these are the things that are going to appeal. But you can't just. It, it was a weird era to go back and just throw stones in glass houses and just shit unceremoniously all over like everything uh, uh, coming out of Japan at the time. And um, and it was again weirdly vindictive and venomous. You know, um, like a little bit of that. Uh, uh, move over, old man. How many times do mm -hmm. I have to tell you? Um, yeah. And, you know, and then there was an actual, like, point in which, like, yeah, like, Call of Duty popped off and first-person shooters took over, and then that actually became, like, oh, the West is dominating video games now. You know? Yeah. Um, 
So anyways, uh, if anyone was looking for receipts as to why Yoshi P was talking about this and... and receipts provided ad nauseum. Yeah, why were... Why, like, people are like, oh, why are the Japanese devs in their fifis? And it's like, well, here you go. Uh, <laughs> there was a fucked up a fucked There was up a lot list. of fifi hurting going on. You know? Um, and you know what? Also, like, and let's you know what? remove all of this. It's weird that they're the only country and the only genre that gets the nation put in front of it as a descriptor. That is kind of weird. As opposed to the general region. Yeah. Like, like you know, there's no, like, there's the only one I can think of, and it kind of is the same, is Eurojank. Well... That it just, but it makes sense just given the fact that Nintendo, Sega, uh, Sony were all coming out of the same place. So it it mm -hmm. make it just makes sense because those were the the biggest things to to buy products from, and they're all from the same mm -hmm. place. So um, I was gonna say that if you want to throw a little bookend on that, um, yeah. the end of that that Phil Fish rant from way back in the day. I don't know if you remember. I but don't. After he went off on the dev who was in the audience and like talked about how shitty Japanese games were. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Japanese dev went, thanks for answering the question. Thank you for your time. And, mm -hmm. and just sat back down, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that, and then it was just, the, the description was a uh, 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 awkward cheers and boos and, stomach whinging noises from the crowd but the dude just took it and went yep thanks thanks for answering and just that was it you know uh anyway Bill Fish is the exact kind of fucking stupid asshole arrogant piece of shit that I moved to get away from <laughs> the, the, the fire that arises every time is Unbelievable! Like so there's two reasons. There is there is right? a there is a kick to your dog level of energy. So there, there's there's two reasons. One, Fez is a piece of shit, and it's an arrogant piece of shit, and it was made by an arrogant piece of shit who happened to be from the city that I was born in and lived there at the time, and sounds like my relatives. Ah. Uh... Like it, it's very personal. Uh... There it is. Like I, I am embarrassed by Phil Fish by association, uh, like okay. legitimately. The accent. A like little he bit. Is a, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, 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 like. Let's just like he may be two cousins over from sure, me. I don't sure. know. Sure, but. And like there, it's important to note. I'm like, I'm like, what? Let's scratch, scratch a little bit of the the ticket right there. Okay, there we go. Also, for, and and also the 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 final part that like I scream and rant and shit myself over the Fez um, uh, letter puzzle, right? Um, the Fez that you play for the first thirty percent of that game, I was really excited for. I'm madly, madly in love with uh, non-traditional space, non-Euclidean geometry, mm -hmm. perspective shifting kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So I was really excited for Fez. And to be told that like by the game, like, hey, you remember that thing you were excited for? Ha ha, that was the trick to get you to play wor the shittiest word puzzle ever. Um, infuriating, infuriating. Here's, uh, here's your delicious hamburger. Guess what? There's poop in it. Yeah, I was going to say, though, just talking about this now and then thinking about uh, the description of Tunic, where you're discovering yeah, the Tunic manual rules. the other day. Tunic where, fucking kicks ass. Where it sounds like a, a functional version of a similar idea. 